to worship at St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in DeSoto, Missouri. Uh, we are glad uh, you are able to join with us in, in this time of worship through song and scripture and spoken word. We're also glad to, uh, to let you know that plans are being made for in-person worship to begin again at St. Andrew's. The target date is June 7th. That's the first Sunday in June. Uh, we're doing our best to get the word out uh, in as many forms as possible. Uh, we also know that there are some, and probably many, uh, who want to play it safe for the time being and would just prefer to stay at home. That is perfectly fine. Uh, and actually, that's one more reason that we plan to continue uh, our online ministry, just like today. Uh, so if you're not able to be at our true site, our physical site, you may still join us online each Sunday morning or at a time that, uh, that, that can fit into your schedule. You know, we worship a big God, and, and a God who wants to, to, uh, to create in you and me lives that bring hope and peace to a world that is, I think, so very desperate for those very things, for hope and for peace. And so today, uh, may our worship, may our worship bring us a little closer to that kingdom of hope and peace, that kingdom where Jesus is Lord. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we give to you this time, clear our minds, sharpen our focus, stir our hearts. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Scripture comes from 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 through 22. 
Now who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts, sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear so that, when you are mouthed, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. Then God waited patiently in days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured now saves you, not as removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal for God to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
David Watson is, to me, one of Methodism's most thought-provoking scholars and minds. Now, uh, he does not have one of the largest followings on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram, and, and I don't, wouldn't suspect that he is some uh, big, flowery, high-powered speaker. Still, uh, when I find an article that David Watson writes, I quickly determine that it is probably something that I need to read, uh, almost, <laughs> almost regardless of the subject. An article that he wrote about two years ago, uh, it speaks of the political and cultural back and forth that seems to permeate today's uh, society. He, he said, the sphere of debate may now be so politicized that people have little to no idea what consensus even looks like. And then he said something that hit really quite close to home at least to me. Uh, he, he said, all too much of our conversations tends towards snark rather than substance. Snark rather than substance. Uh, you may have heard conversations like that, you know, more about uh, getting in a snide remark than about moving the conversation forward. Uh, now, those not familiar with these types of, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say communication have probably not watched uh, news programs in the past, I don't know, since the turn of the century. Actually, since the turn of the 20th century. Uh, our use of snide remarks has been on the rise since the early 1900s. I guess the sad part is, is that it does not seem to be slowing down. So what do we do? Uh, do, do we just, you know, in this world now, it's just kind of the way it is. Do we just go with the flow and, and say, well, you know, I, I, like I said, that's just the way things are. Well, as much as that appeals to the snarky side of me, I think that God calls me, God calls us to something different, something, something that would add substance, that would add significance to our conversations. Now, some will say, well, I, you know, what do I do? I, I've never done something significant in my entire life. You may be like that lady uh, who, who went up to this Princeton scholar uh, after he had given this big lecture on the, on the Milky Way. And the, and the lady said to him, if our world is, is so little and the universe is so great, can we believe God pays any attention to us? Well, the scholar paused for a moment and then he answered, he said, well, that depends, madam, entirely on how big a God you believe in. I guess you could say he added some substance to that conversation they were having. Your significance, my significance, will really not depend on our accomplishments, on our bigness, but on the bigness of God. The Apostle Peter he spoke of God's bigness uh, in, this, in this manner. He spoke of what God did in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. We do something significant uh, when we call attention to the significance of God's work in our lives uh, through the power of Jesus Christ, the one who was put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. The big question, though, still remains, how does that happen? How may we, like Christ, experience a death in the flesh as well as being made alive in the Spirit? And what does this actually have to do with bringing substance to conversations? To, uh, I guess you could say, to tapping down the snide remarks that are made to us or the remarks that are made by us as well. To do that, I'm going to ask you to consider two phrases, uh, two phrases that can help you in those times when, um, how do I say it, when the snarky side of you is ready to engage in battle, you know, uh, two phrases that can help you move from snarkiness to significance. Now, I do need to warn you, uh, these are phrases that are best left unsaid, particularly 
When you are in conversations with, with those, uh, when the potential is for things to kind of get less than civil, best to remember but not to say out loud. So that's kind of my warning. Here are those two phrases. <clears throat> Never wrestle with pigs. You both get dirty and the pig likes it. The second one is this. A wise man once said nothing. Based on the stories we have in the Bible that involve the Apostle Peter, the writer of today's scripture, it was fairly likely that this apostle was one who did not mind wrestling with the pigs. Now, and I'm not talking literally, of course. In fact, Peter was kind of, the, he was the fellow who probably as a devout uh, believer in the Jewish practices, Peter would have said uh, the very last thing that he ever wanted to do was associate with pigs. But still, as the phrase goes, the apostle Peter did not seem to mind getting down and dirty with his actions and with his words. Uh, you may recall that uh, in, in the Gospels, uh, that as, the, as the, uh, the tension began to rise late in Jesus' ministry, there were some very strained moments. Not strange, but very strained moments. One of those moments uh, had Peter saying to Jesus, even if the others desert you, I will still follow you. Now, here's the kicker. I mean, that's a good saying, but here's the kicker. Peter did not say this to Jesus in private. The, the other of the 12 disciples, and maybe even a few others, but they were around him when he said this. I can, I can almost hear one of the other disciples saying, uh, Peter, we are right here. Do you really believe that we cannot hear you? That very same night, which was uh, the night of Jesus' arrest. It was Peter who pulled the sword and began to fight. Jesus had to stop him and say, put away the sword, Peter. Fighting is not what this is about. To say that Peter had a, had a way with words and a way with actions would really be an understatement. Even after the resurrection, the Gospel of John records the story of when, when Jesus was talking with Peter about following him and feeding his sheep and tending his sheep, uh, Peter was really quick to say, well, what about him? Jesus basically called Peter on this by saying, what is that to you? Now, when you think about it, it's almost as if Peter liked the wrestling match. Never wrestle with pigs, you both get dirty, and the pig likes it. And the second phrase, a wise man once said nothing. If ever there was a person who needed to hear those phrases, it was the Apostle Peter. And that is why it is so important, it's so important for us to hear and to read this letter from Peter, the one who did not seem to mind getting down and dirty and whose mouth seemed to get in his way. Verses 15 and 16 of today's scriptures read this way. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. And he said this, yet do it with gentleness and reverence. That's what Peter said. We should always be ready to make a defense for our actions so long as we keep in the front of our minds the need to do this with gentleness and with reverence. Gentleness relates to a gentle strength, you know, that, that strength that is under control. And reverence actually can literally be translated as fear. And if you put that strength under control and fear together, when you put those two together, it tells, me, it tells me that we approach our defense. We approach our defense with a full knowledge of and reverence for the power that is within us. A power that can do good and a 
power that has the capacity to do evil. As much as we can be, can be puffed up about the, the, the power to do good, we need to have a holy fear of the power within us to do that which is not good. It is a combination uh, of, a, of a boldness that can say, here is why I do what I do, partnered with the humility that knows just how close evil can be when we open our mouths. That is why it's important to, to, to keep in mind that second phrase. A wise man once said nothing. So, how does this play out on Monday morning? On Wednesday afternoon, what happens when we find ourselves at the edge of jumping into one of those conversations? What do we do? We rely upon the Holy Spirit to guide us, to guide us in leading with our actions and following with our words. Just because actions speak louder than words does not mean that we never use our words. Uh, we should also know that actions without words can uh, simply leave people with unanswered questions. Uh, one of the things that we really may need to consider is this. When our actions get people's attention, we do not have to speak so loudly to be heard. I want to be able to say that again. When we lead with our actions and follow with our words, when our actions get people's attention, then we don't have to speak so loudly in order to be heard. A few things to consider this week as you go throughout your time or even as you stay at home and as you try to communicate in this continuing time of quarantine or easing of the quarantine. A few things to consider this week. If someone throws criticism at you, if at all possible, wait 24 hours before you respond. I can say this as a, a person with experience and not waiting 24 hours to respond, but if at all possible, somebody throws criticism at you, wait. Just wait. Get away from the situation so that you can gain perspective. Ask God to give you perspective to remember with a holy reverence the power that lies within your next move. Do you want your next move to be characterized as getting down and dirty? Or do you want it to be characterized by wisdom? This week, make a plan for how you will tell your story, the, the story of the significance of God's work in your life. The bigness of God in your life, not your bigness, but God's bigness. Uh, not some generic God is everywhere uh, kind of statement. Rather, what, what has God shown you in these last few days, these last few weeks uh, that is speaking to you? You know, what, what is God showing you through your failures, through your doubts, through, through your fears? I would guarantee you that if you get the opportunity to speak of the significance of God that helped you through your failures, I guarantee you people will listen and you don't have to speak loudly. This week also, look for how you may add substance to conversations, uh, substance that is gentle substance that is reverent, ways that reflect that strength under control, that show a reverence for just how powerful one's words can be and one's actions can be. Uh, now, if you are thinking, you're, you're, I've gone on with this, if you're thinking, there is no way I can do this, it, it, it just is not possible. I want that to be an encouragement to you, actually. I want to encourage you by saying this, that that is when the bigness of God can actually show up. 
it will not be about you. It will be about Christ in you. And that is where we find our significance. That is where we find our substance. That is where we find our answer to those things that, that, that we seem to just get barraged by on a day-by-day -day basis. We find it in Jesus Christ. It is Christ in you. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. Let us pray. God, you are the giver and redeemer of life. May we give our lives to you so that you may redeem them through the resurrection power you showed in Jesus Christ. Redeem in us the words that all too often are said in anger or frustration. And create in us new words, words that speak of redemption. Maybe not wallow in the mud of conflict, but rest in the work you have for us each day we live. Words and work that does not break down. Words and work that builds up. Work that knows when to speak and when to remain silent. May the ministry to which you call each of us be that which reflects your significance in our lives. This we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hear then the benediction. Faith, hope, and love. By these three, but the greatest of these is love. So